At this time, the court again calls State of Wisconsin versus Stephen Avery case number 05CF381. I will indicate that we are on the record at this time. Outside the presence of the jurors, will the parties present state their appearances for the record, please? Good morning, Judge. The state appears by Calumet County District Attorney Ken Craft and Assistant Attorney General Tom Fallon as Special Prosecutors. And good morning as well, Stephen Avery in person and Jerome Buting and Dean Strang on his behalf. Alright, before I get to the specific reason that we're going to go on the record this morning, I wanted to address an item that came to the court's attention yesterday after the jurors began deliberations. There were a couple of requests from the jury for accessories, if you will, to assist them in their deliberations. Specifically, about 1.20 in the afternoon the jurors requested the magnifying glass because of the size of the photos that they received. And at 2.30 the juries requested a dry board, a flip chart or something along those lines that they could use in the course of their deliberations. When requests like this are typically received, the court generally will informally discuss with counsel if any of them have any problem. But normally the court simply sends items back. It's practice and in fact it's required to go on the record whenever a question is received from the jury. But normally it's this court's practice and, and counsel confirmed yesterday that they did not see a need to go on the record for the requests that were being made by the jury. One difference in the case is that the court has been alerted that the media interest in the juror's deliberation extends to the request of the nature of those that were made yesterday. And the court was, frankly, simply not thinking about that yesterday afternoon. But it would be my proposal, if there's any requests like that received in the future, although we may not go on the record for them, if either party feels the need to do so, I will after any such requests are acted on. Simply pass the information to the media coordinator and alert the media of what happened. Is that procedure acceptable to both parties? Yes, Jack. Yes. The next item has to do with one of the jurors in this case. Last evening, sometime around 9pm, the court received a telephone call from Sheriff Pago indicating that one of the jurors had presented a request to uh, one of the supervising deputies over at the hotel to be excused because of an unforeseen family emergency. The court, mindful of its duty to exercise reasonable efforts to avoid the discharge of a juror once deliberations have begun nevertheless concluded that based on the information provided, the request appeared to have merit and warranted further consideration. After I received the information, I contacted Attorney Kratz and both Defence Counsel by telephone conference call to inform them of the request. Counsel agreed that if the information that had been presented to the court was correct, excusing the juror was appropriate in this case. Counsel further authorised the court to speak with the juror individually and excuse the juror if the information provided to the court was verified. The court did verify that information with the juror and excused the juror last evening. Case law in Wisconsin provides three alternatives in a situation now before the court. One alternative is that the parties can stipulate to proceed with 11 jurors. The second alternative is that the parties can stipulate to substitute an alternate juror in this case, the court has previously sequestered one of the alternate jurors to be available for that purpose, if it becomes necessary. The third alternative is to declare a mistrial in the absence of a stipulation by the parties to proceed with one of the other two alternatives. It's my understanding that at this time the parties do have a stipulation to present to the court. Mr Strang. Uh, Your Honour, thank you. Mr. Avery and his counsel are willing to offer their agreement to pursue the following course. One, if the court gives a proper instruction that jury deliberations must begin entirely anew. And two, if each of the 11 presently deliberating jurors provides satisfactory assurance that they can and will follow an instruction to begin deliberations anew, then three, the defence will agree that the person who has been the alternate to date should join the ranks of the 11, becoming the 12th regular juror and the deliberations may begin anew with this newly composed group of 12. If the state thinks the three aspects of this agreement are acceptable, the defence too will be bound by it. And we have discussed that with Mr Avery. 
it has his concurrence and he understands that the court will want to make brief personal inquiry of him as well. Thank you, Mr. Kratz. Judge, the state joins in the stipulation. After our conversation last evening, where the court discussed the option, and after hearing this morning of the defense willingness to enter the stipulation, the state agrees that the alternate juror, who was reserved just for this unusual circumstance or occasion, that, that the court do just that. And so we join in Mr. Strang's request that the court adopt and approve this stipulation. All right. As a supplement to Mr. Strang's request, I should indicate for the record that I did meet with counsel in chambers before we began today and went over a proposed instruction to the jury and question for the jurors to make sure that they could follow the court's instruction. The court prepared that instruction with input from both the parties and Mr. Strang. When you refer to an appropriate instruction, I'm assuming you are referring to the one that was discussed in chambers today. The instruction that the court read to us in chambers this morning after hearing inputs from both sides, we think a proper instruction. Thank you. All right, then, Mr Avery, I do have a few questions to ask you at this point. First of all, have you heard the discussion that we just had, on the record, and the proposal of how to address the issue of the excused juror? Yes, sir. Have you taken some time this morning to discuss this matter with your attorneys? Yes, sir. Are you aware that you are under no obligation to join in this stipulation that is, you have the right to require a jury of 12 and the right to request a mistrial if the juror is excused. Yes, sir. Do you feel that you need any more time to consider your decisions on this issue? No, sir. Are you in agreement with the stipulation that has just been placed on the record by your attorney, Mr Strang? Yes, sir. Very well. The court finds that the parties have jointly stipulated and the defence has stipulated with the knowing and voluntary consent of the defendant. To recall the alternate juror in this case and allow the jurors to begin deliberating anew. Following an instruction from the court as to how the deliberations are to proceed. Is there anything else that either party wishes to bring up on the record before we bring the jurors in? No, Your Honour. No, thank you, Your Honour. And I believe it's the understanding and agreement of both parties that when the jurors are brought in, We'll be bringing in the remaining 11 original jurors and the alternate to take the seat she normally takes. Uh, yes, and that's because this procedure very soon will require naming jurors, as arrangements have been made with the media to preserve the court's requirement that jurors not to be named publicly. All right, I will cue the media, the camera operators. When that time comes in the instructions, at this time, then... We can bring in the jurors. You may be seated. We're going to wait a minute for Miss Stemps to join us. Members of a jury, one of your members has been excused from a jury deliberations in this case because of an unforeseen family emergency. Although excusing a juror during deliberations rarely occurs, it is sometimes necessary. Although excusing a juror during deliberations rarely occurs, it is sometimes necessary. The court has brought back the last alternate juror excused to participate in the deliberations in the case. Before those deliberations begin, I have an important further instruction for you all. The law requires that during deliberations 12 people must have an opportunity to review the evidence in light of each juror's perception, memory and reaction. It is important that the jury reach its conscientious through it is important that the jury reach its consensus through deliberations which are the common experience of all 12 jurors. Each of the 12 must have the opportunity to persuade the other members of the jury to be persuaded by them. If you have formed any views about the evidence up until now, you must set those views aside and start over. To assure that these requirements are followed in this case, you are instructed that you must commence your deliberations anew. That means that you should begin by electing a four-person, then proceed to evaluate all the evidence as though you are just beginning to deliberate. This is necessary to assure the full participation of all 12 jurors in the deliberation process. Before I ask you to begin deliberating, it is necessary that I be assured that each of you will be able to deliberate on this basis. Therefore, I am going to individually ask each of you one more question. 
At this time, I will ask the media to cut the audio portion. Thank you. Each of you must accept that this juror is an equal member of this jury, giving her the full respect and authority that you would give to any other juror. Mr. Slabby, will you follow this instruction? I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew. Yes. Miss Free, will you follow this instruction? I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew. Yes. Miss Schmidt, will you follow the instructions I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew? Yes. Miss Bourne, will you follow this instruction I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew? Yes. Miss Dorn, will you follow the instructions I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew? Yes. Mr. Nelson, will you follow the instructions I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew? Yes, sir. Mr. Klein, will you follow the instructions I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew? Yes. Mr. Shute, will you follow the instructions I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew? Yes. Miss Flint. Will you follow the instructions I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew? Yes. Mr. Moore, will you follow the instructions that I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Wardman, will you follow the instructions I have just given you and begin your deliberations anew? Yes. Last, Miss Dance, have you heard the instructions that I have given to the jury and are you willing to resume your role as a juror under those instructions in the case? Yes, I am. Thank you. Members of the jury, the court will prepare a written copy of the instruction that I have just given you to send back so that you will have it with you, so that you will have it with your other instructions in this case. Miss Dents, do you still have your original instructions or do you need another sent back? It was left in the room. All right, I will see to it that another set of full instructions gets sent back for you. At this time then, members of the jury, you are excused and you may begin your deliberations. You may be seated. Counsel, I will ask you to stop back then in about 10 minutes so that I can prepare a written version of this instruction. Sent back to the jury and each of you can sign off on it. All right. Anything else while we're on the record? No, Judge. Thank you. Uh, no, thanks. Very well, Counsel. I'm going to ask you to stop back right away. Okay. At this time, we're on the record outside the presence of the jury. All counsel except Mr. Gann are present and the defendant is also present, in person. I can indicate for the record that the court has received a written question from the jury dated today at 1.29pm. Following receipt of the question, I met with counsel and chambers and discussed a proposed answer to the question. I believe the parties are in agreement with that answer. I will read the question and the answer at this time and then will ask the parties if the answer is acceptable. The question from the jury reads, Could we please read or hear the transcript of Bobby Dassey's testimony? It is signed by Daniel Slavy, who I presume to be the four person, dated today at 1.29pm. The proposed answer is the following. Dear jury members, this is in response to your request for a transcript of Bobby Dassey's testimony. As the court has instructed you, you will not have a copy of the written transcript of the trial testimony available for use during the deliberation. You may ask to have specific portions of the testimony read to you, but you must continue to rely primarily on your memory of the evidence and the testimony introduced during the trial. The court does not have and cannot provide you with a transcript of Bobby Daffy's entire testimony. If you can identify a specific portion of his testimony, the court will attempt to address your request. Please do not disclose the state of your deliberations in any such way. Request signed by me, Mr. Kratz. Is that answer acceptable to the state? Yes. Mr. Strang, Mr. Butin, I don't know if you discuss this matter with your client. I will give you the opportunity to do so if you wish. Uh, Mr. Butin did briefly. The answer is acceptable both to Defence Counsel and to Mr. Avery. Very well. If there's nothing further, I will send the original copy of the answer back to the jury and then keep the juror's question and copy of the answer for the court file. Do you want us to wait here in case there is a quick reply? Actually, I have got another matter I would like to talk to you in chambers about. So let's meet back there. At this time, we're on the record outside the presence of a jury. 
In the case of State of Wisconsin versus Stephen Avery, case number 05CF381. Will the parties present please identify themselves for the record? The state appears by Ken Kratz and Tom Fallon as special prosecutors. Judge. Stephen Avery is here in person, Your Honor. Jerome Buting and Dean Strain on his behalf. All right. I will indicate we're in the courtroom outside the presence of the jury at this time to address a written request that was received from the jury. Specifically, the request reads as follows. Your Honour, we would like to have the testimony shown or read to us from Cherry Cohen on Monday, February 26, on her DNA results on Exhibit 164. Exhibit 154 is a 2.2 caliber rifle. After the court received that request, I first summoned the attorneys for both sides to Chambers to have a look at it. We then had the court reporter research the minute of her testimony that was taken down on Monday, February 26 from Miss Colhane. I have received pieces of her testimony in three separate parts from that day, listed as pages or part of page 32, part of page 34 of what I believe is the morning transcript, and then page 8 and part of page 9 from the afternoon transcript. After completing the transcription of February 26, 2007, trial day 11, the page numbers are 33, 34, 115, 116 and 117. Those portions of the transcripts have been shared with counsel, and it's my understanding that counsel for both parties are asking that I read to the jury all of the testimony from the pages I have just referred to. Mr. Strang, is that correct on behalf of the defendant? Yes. And Mr. Kratz. Judge, it's Exhibit 164. I believe you said 154. But 164 is a photograph of the 22 caliber rifle. We have all assumed that the testing, which results find its way in Exhibit 313, that the jury is asking about the testing of the item itself. The rifle itself is Exhibit 247. But we have been able, I think the court and counsel, to ascertain that they are asking about the results from the item itself, since the exhibit, exhibit number is the photograph and wouldn't, of course, have DNA results. But we do agree with the court that those portions of those four pages should be read. Actually, the distinction you may just have made raises a question into the court's mind. And that is, I'm wondering if we shouldn't, before we bring the jurors in, the jurors in and read this to them, ask them for a clarification to make sure that the exhibit we're talking about is the exhibit they are referring to in their note, since they reference it by number rather than the exhibit. Uh, they just have photographs, sure enough, back there, so... Okay. I think it's pretty clear. Well... Does the state feel there's a need? I think they want the item itself, Judge. All right. Well, let me ask this. Should I clarify, before we begin, that the court and the parties assume that they're referring to a photograph of a 22 caliber rifle? Uh, sure. And perhaps, Judge, that the item itself is Exhibit 247. They are certainly always free, then, to ask additional questions. Mr. Strang. That's fine. Okay. Uh, just clarify or make certain. All right. Anything else before we bring the jurors in? We'll bring the jury in at this time. You may be seated. Members of the jury, the court has received your written request to have some of the testimony read to you. Specifically, a request for testimony from Sherry Colhane on Monday, February 26, on her DNA results on Exhibit 164. It's the court's understanding that you are referring to the rifle that was introduced as Exhibit 247, that is pictured in Exhibit 164. The testimony has been transcribed. It's in, actually, three separate portions of the testimony that was given by Miss Colhane on that date, and I will read each of those excerpts to you at this time. The answers are all given as part of the cross-examination by Attorney Putin for the defence. The first excerpt reads as follows. Question. As well as the licence plates from the RAV4, and to check the 22 caliber gun, item DD, for any indication of the victim's blood in the barrel. Right? Answer. Yes. 
question, and also to swap the trigger guard area to compare with Stephen Avery. Answer, correct, and shortly thereafter the following exchange. Question, and you checked item DD, 2-2 caliber gun, that's a rifle, right? Answer, yes. Question, you look for any blood of the victim on the barrel, right? Answer, correct. Question, you found no DNA of Teresa Hallback on the barrel. Answer, correct. Question, you looked at the trigger guard as well, not just the trigger guard, but the trigger itself. Answer, yes. Question, you swore both, right? Answer, yes. Question, and you found no DNA of Mr Avery, right? Answer, correct. Then a bit later, the following exchange took place. Question. Now you also looked, or asked to look, we saw the message earlier, at the uh, two two rifle swabs that were taken from it, right? Answer. Yes. Question. And the purpose there was not to see if you could find Teresa Hallback's DNA, but to see if you would find Mr Avery's DNA, right? Answer. Was that IMDD? Question. Yes. Answer. I believe I was requested to look for possible blood on the barrel part and DNA from the trigger area. Question. And you found neither correct? Answer. That's correct. Question. You did not find Mr Avery's DNA on the weapon anywhere, did you? Answer. On the trigger guard is the only place I swab, but no, I didn't. Question. And you did not find Teresa Hallback's DNA anywhere on the barrel either? Answer. Correct. Question. Are you familiar with close, close, almost contact type shootings? Answer. I don't know what you mean by that. Question. Are you familiar with the term blowback? Answer. Yes. Question. You know that if someone shoots another human being with a gun that's very close to them, there may be blowback splatter of blood onto the weapon? Answer. I assume that's possible. Question. Well, that's what you were looking for. Answer. I was simply looking for bloodstains, yes. Question. On the barrel? Answer. Correct. Question. And you found none? Answer. Correct. And that represents the testimony in response to your question. At this time, the court will excuse you to resume your deliberations. Counsel, you may be seated. Anything else while we're on the record? No, Your Honour. No. Very well. At this time, we're on the record outside the presence of a jury. The court has been informed that the jury has reached verdicts in this matter. Will the parties present state their appearances for the record? Your Honour. The State of Wisconsin appears by Kelly McCanny, District Attorney Ken Kratz, Assistant Attorney General Tom Fallon, both appearing as Special Prosecutors. Uh, good afternoon. Stephen Avery is in person. Jerome Buting and Dean Strang on his behalf. Before the court brings a jury in and receives the verdicts, I want to remind all those present in the courtroom that this is a court of law. The court recognises the emotional nature of this case and its importance to all parties involved. However, vocal outbursts or any displays of emotion will not be tolerated. Any violation will result in removal from the courtroom. At this time, I will ask that the jury be brought in. You may be seated. Members of the jury, the court has been informed that the jury has reached its verdicts in this case. At this time, I will ask the four person to present the verdicts to the bailiff so that they may be brought forward. At this time the court will read the verdicts. On count one, the verdict reads as follows. We the jury find the defendant, Stephen A. Avery, guilty of first degree intentional homicide, as charged in the first count of the information. On count two, the verdict reads, we the jury Find the defendant, Stephen A. Avery, not guilty of mutilating a corpse as charged in the second count of the information. On count three, the verdict reads, We the jury, find the defendant, Stephen Avery, guilty of possession of a firearm as charged in the third count of the information. 
The verdict on count one is signed by the foreperson of a jury, dated today. The other verdicts are also signed by the foreperson of a jury. At this time, the court is going to poll the jurors. I will ask the media folks to cut the audio at this time. Mr Slabby, were the verdicts as read by the court, and are they still now your verdicts in this case? Yes, Your Honour. Mrs Free, were the verdicts as read by the court, and they are still now your verdicts in this case? Yes, sir. Miss Schmidt, were the verdicts as read by the court, and they are still now your verdicts in this case? Yes, sir. Miss Thorne, were the verdicts as read by the court, and they are still now your verdicts in this case? Yes, sir. Miss Dorn, were the verdicts as read by the court, and they still are now your verdicts in the case? Yes, sir. Mr Nelson, were the verdicts as read by the court, and are they still now your verdicts in the case? Yes, sir. Mr Klein, were the verdicts as read by the court, and they are still now your verdicts in this case? Yes, your honour. Mr Shute, were the verdicts as read by the court, and are they still now your verdicts in this case? Yes, your honour. Miss Flint, were the verdicts as read by the court, and are they still now your verdicts in the case? Yes, your honour. Mr Moore, were the verdicts as read by the court, and are they still now your verdicts in this case? Yes, your honour. Miss Stent, were the verdicts as read by the court, and are they still now your verdicts in this case? Yes, Your Honour. Mr Wardman, were the verdicts as read by the court, and as they are still now, your verdicts in the case? Yes, Your Honour. Members of the jury, on behalf of Manitowoc County, I would like to express my sincerest gratitude and appreciation for your services in this case. I recognise the personal sacrifice in terms of time and restrictions on your normal activities that the court has required of you during this trial. That sacrifice is a necessary part of the price we pay for the judicial system every citizen enjoys. I hope that you found the experience a rewarding one. Before discharging you, I have one final instruction. Now that your services in this case is completed, some of you may have questions about the confidentiality of the proceedings. Many jurors ask if they are at liberty to discuss the case with anyone after receipt of the verdict. Because your role in this case is over, you are free to discuss it with any person you choose, if you wish. However, you should know that you do not have to discuss the case with anyone or answer any questions about it from anyone other than the court. If you decide to discuss the case with anyone, I would suggest that you treat any discussion with a degree of solemnity, such that whatever you do say, you would be willing to say in the presence of your fellow jurors are under oath, here in open court, in the presence of the parties. Also keep in mind, if you do decide to discuss the case, that your fellow jurors freely and fully stated their opinions with the understanding that they were being expressed in confidence. Please respect the privacy of the views of your fellow jurors. If any members of the jury wish to discuss the case today with representatives of the media, arrangements have been made to admit you to do so before we leave. Should anyone, whether from media or otherwise, persist in attempting to question you over your objection, you should contact the court. Finally, should any of you have any questions for the court before leaving today, please let the bailiff know before you leave the jury room. At this time, you are excused. You may be seated at this time. The court will entertain any motions for the judgment on verdicts. At this time, Judge, I would ask the court enter judgment on each of the three verdicts. Anything else from the defence? Your Honour, I ask that the court enter judgment of acquittal on count two of the second amended information, and I ask that the court withhold judgment on counts one and three, set a schedule for post-verdict motions, in part, inconsistent verdicts, and anything else we might want to address. The court is going to, at this time, Enter a judgment on the free verdicts that have been received subject to further rulings from the court after full consideration of any post-trial motions. That is, a judgment of conviction on counts 1 and 3 and a judgment of the acquittal on count 2. I do not have any calendar here today. It's in Manitowoc. I'm going to at this time order a present tense investigation report. 
The court will schedule a hearing on any motions after they are received and schedule a sentencing day after conversation with counsel. Later, contingent on any rulings on any post-trial motions. Would 30 days for filing the motions be acceptable? Any objection from the state? Are we setting those before the sentencing hearing? Yes. Well, I will decide that when I get them. If and when I get them. I don't have any motions in front of me. I'm not going to speculate about hearing dates at this time. The court is going to, however, order that the bail be revoked in this case. Is there anything further from either party on the record today? Nothing for today, Judge. Thank you. No, Your Honour. Very well. We are adjourned.